Greetings, everybody. Welcome to Akihabara. This is where you find a lot of manga, anime, game centers, various amazing stuff from modern pop culture here in Japan. And we're going to be going out and showing you a walkthrough of this amazing area. But it's not limited to that kind of stuff, all right? We're going to go through some of the history. Boom, here we are. Welcome to Akihabara. I'm now going to the uh, Denki Town or the Akihabara Denki Gai area. Now it's no longer like that anymore. Let's get out of the station. Akihabara has changed a lot over the last 150 years, just like any other place. And we're going to be looking at, looking at all of that in the next 45 minutes on this live stream as we enter Akihabara. All right, welcome to the Denki Town or the Akihabara Denki Gai exit. There you go. Pretty cool. Now this side is very light. It's uh, very uh, bright, very vibrant. Lots and lots of manga, anime on the sides of buildings. This, this electronic shop is now lobby, but it, a long time ago it wasn't. But the, the, the shape of the building has stayed the same since the 1980s. It's quite an old building. It's kind of cool. It looks like you're going through a hamster tube. One of my favorites. That hasn't changed. But this one, which is called Radio Kaikon, right? Radio Kaikon right there has changed a lot. Um, back, I guess it's about five years ago, before they did, they redid, redid this building. It was a very iconic sign, and they kind of re re retain that through that yellow sign there with the red moji, the red text. It says Raj Red Radio Kaikan Akihabara, and uh, yeah, radio came before TV. So we're going back a long, long time in history. Now, I'm going to show you a little bit about this area and give you some of the history right now before we start. Before we start, this here is the Akihabara station area the station is quite big it does an X right here and what you can see on this line is this is the Sobu line sorry hold on wait a second this is the Sobu line which goes towards Asakusabashi and out towards Chiba and this is the Yamanote line I believe and right here is the Kanda River and this is very significant and you're gonna be no I'm gonna tell you why the Kanda River is very important to the city of Tokyo All right. Now Akihabara is very famous these days for being a manga anime mecca center, so to speak. And it is true. It's it's a very important, almost a sacred place for people who love manga and anime. But there's so much more to this place. Now the history of Akihabara as a location is that it was right next to one of the gates of Edo, which was the old capital of Tokyo. We're talking like like the 18th century, 19th century, okay? And then there was a big fire in the year 1869. Now, Tokyo had a lot of fires back then, and you can imagine that uh, all the buildings made of wood, yeah, a lot of the stuff burned down, and they just rebuilt, and it was sort of just a common way of life in the, in all cities around Japan. You make stuff out of wood, you have fire, you cook, things burn down. And in 1869, Akihabara and this area burned down and they rebuilt it. And that's when the name Akihabara came about. It was not called Akihabara originally. It was called Akibagahabara. Oh wait, hold on, let me get it. Akibagahara, I think. Now Akihabara, the kanji for Akihabara means, um, Aki means autumn, fall. Uh, Akihabara, uh, leaf, and hara means like a field. So it means like an autumn leaf field. And I'll show you right here why. This is a picture of Akihabara way back in 18, in the 1880s, I believe. And you can see up here on the top right, uh, sorry, the top left of the photo, there's a big clearing, a big field. Do you see that right there? That's Akihabara. 
that's sort of what it means. And a, a lot of it burned down, as I said earlier. So maybe that's why there's a big field there or some, a big hole in the middle of, a, of the city of, of Tokyo or Edo at this time. But the name Akihabara means autumn leaf field. And this is what it looked like before. And this is what it looks like now. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Things have changed a lot since the 1880s. Now Akihabara Station, which you see right here, this Akihabara Station opened up in 1890, was started construction in 1888, and it was from this that the area really grew because once you put in a train station, things move pretty quickly. And then the population started to increase, commerce started to increase, and at that time, this area was starting to boom because it was just outside of the of Kanda River. Now the Kanda River goes around the Imperial Palace. This is why the Kanda River is very significant. The Kanda River is kind of like a moat around it. So there's the the areas inside the Kanda River closer to the Imperial Palace, and then there are the areas outside of the Kanda River, which kind of meant that you were like a lower level samurai if you were outside of the Kanda River. And even today. There's kind of this, this feeling for real old-timer snobs that if you live outside of the Yamanote line, then you kind of don't have a lot of money in your lower class. And if you live inside of the Yamanote line or on the Yamanote line, you're better. And then I think it was the 1995 or 1996, it said, okay, you, you can live three stops away from the Yamanote line. So this is kind of like thing that some of the older aristocracy has with living inside of the center of Tokyo. And it still kind of exists today. Now this, this road that you see here is Chuodori and Chuodori is the main avenue that goes through this side of Tokyo, meaning it'll go straight, if you go straight it'll take you to Ueno. And if you go the other way, which is behind me, it cuts right through Ginza. So this, this road, I believe if you go straight, will take you all the way down to Shinagawa. So it's quite, quite an important road. But in this area of, of uh, Akihabara, the most famous thing here is, is this crossing here. Because you can see above it, that's the Chuo line. And that's the Chuo line, I think I told you a little bit before, that cuts across from Shinjuku going towards Chiba. And every couple of minutes, you'll see the train roll by. And we don't see it right now, but I'm gonna take you this way. We'll see the train roll by and we'll get a chance to take a look at that on the way. I told you, this wasn't just gonna be about like, manga and anime and stuff like this. I'm gonna take you on a real tour. Oh, there we go. It's kind of a cool picture. If you stand over there on the other side, you can see the Sega World and some of the other um, anime manga billboards with the Chuo line going by. It looks like a real city, you know? Like on the move. That's what we're doing right here. Now, before I cross the street and go over towards before I cross the street and go over towards the Maid Cafe Alley, um, I want to show you this right here. In this area of the city, this area of Akihabara, it's, it's quite famous because historically, Akihabara was, after World War II, where all of the, all of the black market, not all of it, but a lot of the black market stuff was sold here. Uh, because this area was outside of the jurisdiction of the government. Basically, everything was because there was no government after World War II. But people still needed stuff. And they came here for electronics and home appliances. And that, that um, image of Akihabara still exists today, although it, it's somewhat overshadowed now by the uh, otaku, manga, anime, kind of, and game center kind of thing. But the electronics has always been part of Akihabara's DNA going back to World War II and because the black market stuff was sold here at first that meant like entrepreneurship really took off in Akihabara. Entrepreneurship was always big here and you still see it in all the little maid cafes, all the big maid cafes and in mom and pop shops. People with ideas will start businesses here in Akihabara. It's kind of a place where you can launch stuff. Um, that feeling comes all the way back uh, to maybe a little bit before World War II and then after World War II. Uh, and a lot of these shops are family owned. Like they've been here forever and they just serve, they sell. I'm not, I've seen this guy before. <laughs> but they just sell. I think he's the son of one of the owners. I, I can't quite remember. Uh, Kyushu Denki. 
but they, they sell like all sorts of random parts. And this isn't what you would think of Akihabara, I don't know, in 2018, but it's what you get in Akihabara if you kind of look through it. I'm gonna take you quickly. I'm gonna just take you quickly through through one of the alleys here. You can see just walking around. It's just like filled with filled with electronics, like stuff that you can get at a hardware store or a home center, but it's all owned by uh, mom and pop shops. And they, they love LED lights here. Check it out. They love LED lights here. And this is all, oh, these are like weights. These are all part of the history of Akihabara. All right, I'm coming out now. Just little electronic stuff. A lot of it is used or recycled or sometimes new. And they can still compete with the big, big electronic store, which I'm gonna show you a little bit later. But this is, this is part of Akihabara's DNA. A lot of it has been torn down, but these little, these little shack looking shops in the front, that, these go all the way back to World War II. And you'll see these, and not, they don't really stick, they don't really stick around. Um, a lot of them were destroyed, or a lot of those little shops were taken away when they built, they redid the station. But these, these shops were all over the, in fr the front of the station. Thus, the exit that we, end, we, the exit that we came out of is called Denki Town, or Electronics Town, because this is where it all happened. It's pretty cool. So, with the increase in uh, um, entrepreneurship here in Akihabara, a lot, of, a lot of businesses were coming here. People came up with an idea, would start shops. From this came elect home, home appliances. And when that, that got kind of old, like selling vacuum cleaners was not really the future, uh, they started selling computers. And it was in the 1980s that the computer industry was just booming here in Japan. And if you cross the street here, which we're gonna do on the next traffic light, when you cross the street here, you're gonna see still remnants of the 1980s. So this is the remnants right here of World War, after World War II, and we're gonna be going to the remnants of 1980s, which is a little bit further because this real estate was already taken. So entrepreneurs moved further outside on the other side of Chuo Avenue. So we're gonna go over there in a minute. Don't worry, I got lots of stories to fill, <laughs> to fill the time. But with, with the tourism explosion, it has increased like 400% over the last 10 years. These electronic shops, they don't just sell lights anymore, they will sell like tourist stuff. So you'll be able to, to pick up like samurai t-shirts, <laughs> like magnets and stuff. Look at that, that's pretty nice. Which is good because I like to support local businesses and if, and if I can see something like this, maybe other squishies. Oh, that's soft. <laughs> ah. So. We're gonna cross now Chu Avenue and go into the 1980s. Hey, thanks everyone for the super chats. I saw them coming in. I'm, I'm talking so much. I'm not looking back and seeing some of your questions. That's true, a lot of the owners, so a lot of the owners in the shops, uh, the, they've, they've sold out to move out of this area and they've sold to businesses, some of them um, immigrants coming from China and other places around Asia. So this, this is something that you'll see all around the city of Tokyo. If you go down um, uh, Yakitori Alley in Shinjuku, which is called, um, Omoide Yokocho, I'd say half of the businesses there, I'm not really sure the number, but it seems like half of them are owned now by uh, Chinese immigrants that have moved to Japan recently. And you can tell in the quality of the food, not that it's bad, it's just different, you know? It's just different. So you'll see a lot of these shops are not owned by 
the same families that founded it after World War II. All right, guys, now we're gonna be walking down towards the computer area. And it was in the 1980s, in the end of the 70s and the 1980s, computers and cameras started just taking off. And they needed a place to sell it. So because Akihabara was all, already known as the uh, home, home electronics area, home appliances, it seemed a natural place to put the computers. So the result was that you get a lot of computer parts stores. And as we make a right here, I oh, thank you, Derek. As we make a right here, you're going to start to see that DNA from 40 years ago. This is also a famous street known as being, I like to call it, Maid Cafe Alley. Because you'll just see a, a hundred maids out here trying to recruit you into their maid cafes. A lot of the maid shops, the maid cafes, they can't afford to be on the main street over there. So they come a little bit deeper, just, just a little bit deeper. Now, I, I kind of have good memories of this underneath the Chuo line right here. Not because of the Kentucky Fried Chicken, but because I did a main channel episode at this uh, mystery vending machine about a year ago at Christmas time. I bought all my Christmas presents here. <laughs> it was pretty fun. So I want you to check, definitely check that out. But I, I interviewed the CEO, the guy who made this concept, and uh, he showed me what was inside. So you get to see what you can actually get inside of it and, and how random it is. But these machines are all over uh, the city of Tokyo. The problem is that they're $10 for each one. Hey, professor's in the house. Uh, it would be cool if you could run it, if I could run into you somehow. You never know, I'm all over the city. I'm all over the city. I wanna thank Derek and Asian movie enthusiast already. Thank you very much for the support. All right, now we're gonna walk down the computer, see some computer parts, and then take a look at the maid cafe. Now the maid cafes don't start going for a little bit longer, but um, there are tons of game centers here. A lot of the businesses moved onto this side of Chuo, Street, Chuo Avenue. So this, these are two game centers that have been here forever. I don't know how long they're gonna be here though because people just don't come down this way very often. There's not as much foot traffic as there used to be back in the 80s because if you want computer parts, you could just order it directly from the makers these days. So what you got is a lot of uh, video games in this Tokyo leisure land and you have a lot of uh, gotcha, um, UFO catchers, just stuff that people can, people can use their money on really quickly. That is slightly creepy, slightly. Lots of gotcha pawn and we're gonna be passing one of them. Adult videos, which is also part of the 1980s. As, as the computer industry started to slow down, or sorry, it was in the 1970s that, and this is coming from people that I know, there's not a lot of history about what Akihabara was like in the 60s and 70s. Uh, and from what I learned from talking to people in Japan, this is a smutty area where there was a lot of action going on where you can buy things <laughs> that was, that was, that's for adults only. And uh, that was the image of Akihabara in the 60s and the 70s. And it was the 80s, the computers that kind of brought it back to uh, reality with selling stuff that was, you know, non-human. So that's Hamada Denki, I never heard of them. But you can see in the advertisements, they're selling lots and lots of electronic products. There's SD cards. These are, little, these are a lot cheaper than the, than the main store. These are parallel goods probably sold uh, in the United States or something and brought here. So there's lots of stuff that you won't find in other places. Like Odobashi Camera, which sells all the mainstream stuff. And uh, what do we got here? Suki Umo Electronics. There's another electronics store. Of course they put. Of course they put in ramen. You know, like there, there are these shops that have come up here. Here's another. Uh, it says here it's really cheap. It says up there. The red. The red says cheap, and they just sell like used parts for computers and things like that. All right, already we've, we're starting to see some of the maids. Here's some more computer stuff. Now down this street, you're gonna see 
more computer you see here just like if you ever needed just one part of the computer you could probably find it down this street and this street I, I've come down here many times looking for used computers but I never actually buy the used computers I don't know there's no warranty there's a there's the another entrance to uh, Tsuki Umo uh, electronics store right but they're doing construction here and this had even more computers so all of the new apartment housing and management by the way this is a very famous uh, tonkatsu breaded pork cutlet shop awesome it's a little pricey twenty dollars for a bowl but it's really really good people have been lining up the shop doesn't even open for another hour for another half hour it's pretty crazy right all right I told you that the alley this is known for computers from the 1980s but after the 1980s and the computer boom started to simmer and you could start ordering stuff online and Gateway came in and Gateway was kind of disruptive in the 90s. That's when, you know, the manga and anime industry started to boom here and it, it kind of helps that Akihabara is not that far away from Jimbocho and it's not that far away from all the publishing houses. Akihabara is sort of in the center. It's uh, within walking distance to Jimbocho, which is where Shueisha is, which is where One Piece is made, which is where Shonen Jump is made. Um, I featured them in a video uh, last year where I got to, to go into the editorial room. I was, I'm the only journalist that's ever been inside the, the Shonen Jump editorial room, like Japanese or foreign, so it was kind of a big deal. Um, you might, might want to check out that video. But it was in the 1990s that this started to become the otaku center or a sacred place because manga places started taking the place, maid cafes started to open up to take the place of those computer stores that went are going out of business because the computer industry and the electronics industry was changing. So this seemed to be a natural place to, to, to feel close to the publishers but also have everything right off the Yamanote line. It's a very convenient place. So I'm gonna walk through, I'm gonna put the um, wide angle lens on this side and you, you can't you're not supposed to film the maids but I, I'm not gonna actually film them they're just gonna get in the way but you're gonna be able to see them and you can hear them sometimes shouting to get to attract you to come into the maid maid cafe there's one on the second floor there they're trying to get people to go in there they're recruiting So, oh, this one is made dreaming, but in general, I'm not going to show anybody's face, but you can see this is uh, an alley where <laughs> the girls will come out and try to recruit, uh, especially foreign tourists, to come in. There's one in purple on the right. And what you can do is look at the, look at the brochure and see if you're interested in it. That's sort of what, what I do. No, I don't, I don't go to maid cafes anymore. I used to go for a TV because I had to do it for reporting. Um, I did a maid cafe episode for NHK back in 2008 with my friend uh, Patrick Galbraith and uh, another YouTuber at the time named Kevin, Kevin Cooney. Tokyo Cooney was his name. He's one of the original J vloggers here in Japan. And he was part of, he was part of, uh, um, the NHK show, Tokyo Eye, that I would do way, way back, like 10 years ago. And we came here and we explored, I think, 10 maids cafes. And it's pretty unique, but the thing with, with filming in maid cafes is they often ask you to pay a media fee and they don't like their picture taken. In fact, they hate it. And in fact, if you try to film, they will have their manager come out. And if the manager comes out, they, they just like make you not film. <laughs> They're like, they're pretty, it, it's pretty aggressive and that might go back to the 1970s uh, when this was kind of a smutty area. Maybe those guys started running maid cafes. I'm not sure. But the entrepreneur spirit of Akihabara has always been alive. Like this right here. You see on the, on the st side street right there? This, it just says LED. So because this used to be a computer shop selling used parts, but they knew that they couldn't do that anymore because nobody was buying computer parts because you can get that all online. So they turned the shop into an LED shop and all you can see is, <laughs> all you can see is like LEDs. In fact, they have a LED light that says LED on it, which is pretty cool. But also down here, you'll get old used computer parts and they still have them broken down. You can find computer parts from the 1980s probably, like the original um, Apple Macintosh is probably hanging around somewhere in, in, a, in an office on the second floor. 
is pretty cool. You'll also see a lot of made cafes back here. And uh, it, it's, it's hard for me to, it, it's hard for anybody really to keep track of, of it. I'm gonna just walk down here for a minute and then I'm gonna return back uh, to the street. Because this is, this is, um, this is a, a unique area of Akihabara. This is where the current culture has just fused with the otaku culture. Sorry, the, the computer culture is fused with the otaku culture. So you see these tons of these computer shops. And it's a lot quieter back here. There's ice, Iosis. Yeah, they, they sell used stuff here. You can negotiate, you can haggle with them, but not too much further off of the real price. And there you go. It's fused in with maid cafes that have started to take over um, with the computer businesses that no longer can afford it because no, she's got a, no way, she's got a QR code on her back. What? I've never seen, I've never seen a maid with a QR code on her back. That's pretty, that's pretty crazy. So what do people do? Just take the smartphones and scan her back? <laughs> what? I've never seen that before. I've never seen that before. Oh, this is, all right, there you go. You can see, you can see um, the train rolling by, but this is where I got my GH5 fixed. Uh, my Panasonic camera broke and this is the repair shop. So Panasonic has an office here for fixing stuff and that's part of the, part of the history. Oh, this is the, um, this is a weird maid's cafe. Oh, is this the ninja one? There's one, I guess it's not open yet, but you'll see, you'll see ninja dressed up as, as maids and you can go in there. Just all of these really weird businesses on the second, this is on the third floor of this building. And this is a vape, you can vape with the maids or something. This, they have all these really weird concepts. It's pretty, it's really weird. I don't know. Who want this? I never heard anyone wanted, wanting to vape with maids, but if that's your thing, there you go. If you do look up on these businesses, you will see first floor computer store, second floor, second floor, maid cafe. And that's Maid Dreamin', which is the McDonald's of maid cafes. Let me take this off here. Maid Dreamin' is the McDonald's of maid cafes. They're all over the place now, but that doesn't mean it's a bad experience. Made cafes can be fun. And you know, if, if people ask me, is it worth going to a made cafe? And my answer is like, I don't know. I guess so. The thing is that, you know, you can't really take pictures. They're very protective of their privacy. And I don't know why. You'd think you'd want to promote it, but that's like a Japanese thing where they don't want their picture taken or they don't want to be filmed up there. All right, this shop here is huge. And one of the reasons why I came down the street was to get a view of it coming towards it. Do you see the Pac-Man and the Mario Brothers up there? I think you could see, what is that? Um, Metroid, some other games. That's Super Potato. And Super Potato is famous for being um, a, a place where you can buy retro game uh, controllers, retro game consoles. You can buy lots of um, retro everything is in there and I kind of went in there in my retro game episode on the main channel which you can check out LED it's open from 11 so it just opened right now I'm not gonna go up there because uh, this is a tour from the street view of it but it's a pretty cool place and I think it's worth stopping in even if you're if you're not really interested in retro games I think it's something like if you were if you were a um, gamer in the 1980s or a kid growing up in the 80s this is gonna take you way back down memory lane there you go they have they have the like original Atari games for example up up in there that you can buy it's ex it's really cool all right now now they're out in force I think so I think if, if you come down this street you're gonna be able to see lots and lots of different experiences lots and lots of different made cafes that I think are gonna give you a pretty unique experience I you know each cafe 
is very different. Each one has its own attraction. Like there's the the Vape with Maid Cafe, there's the Ear Cleaning Cafe, there's the vamp, Vampire Maid Cafe, there's the there's the Maid Cafe where the girls are really boys cafe, which is not which which was pretty interesting. I did the one for NHK. Surprisingly, there, there, it, it was a very fun time. Maybe not surprisingly. So there you go. That's Maid Cafe Alley. You can see the Chuo line chugging up, chugging along up there. It's a pretty cool street, and it's worth walking, walking off Chuo Avenue, walking off the main street to come this way. All right. Off of that alley is one of the big. Yeah. How you doing? Hi. Thank you. <laughs> Where are you from? New York. Oh, okay. I'm actually live streaming. Are you yeah, okay? my friend told me. He told oh. me to chase you down. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you did it. You found me off the alley. Yeah. yeah. How long are you here for? Uh, at least tomorrow. What? Yeah, I know. I have work and stuff. Okay. I've been here since uh, Monday, though. Okay. Yeah, it's really nice. What do you think of Akihabara? Uh, it's better than what we got in New York. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, you, which part of New York are you from? Uh, specifically the Bronx. Okay. But uh, I work in Manhattan. Okay. Yeah, a, a lot of people have been asking me to compare parts of the city of Tokyo with parts of the parts of Manhattan or parts of New York City. Mm. Is there anything of any equivalent to New York, like Akihabara or? No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Osaka has a place that is called Shinsekai, which is similar to Akihabara in a way, but. I think Akihabara is pretty original. Yeah. yeah, we don't have electronic stores like this, not at all. If, if we did at one point, online businesses kind of put them out. Yeah. Yeah, stuff like Amazon, <laughs> they can't keep up. Yeah, not with the price point no, as well. All, no. And then we walk around the station and all these mom and pop shops are still staying in business selling yeah, electronic it's, parts. It's amazing. I it's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> What's your name? Noel. Noel, nice to meet you, nice Noel. Nice to meet you too. I gotta keep the tour going. Of course, I got, I got some shopping to do. <laughs> All right. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Very cool. Now this is a, a very big uh, at home cafe, and at home is one of the big chains. That this is not made dreaming, but they've become quite big because they were the first made cafe back. I don't even know. I don't even know the the history behind this. And I'm not even. I'm not even gonna try to know the history of at home cafe, but. The first one was opened up in Don Quixote, which we're going to walk by in a minute. And this one just looks beautiful. Look at the door entrance. It looks like something out of, I don't know, San, uh, San Rio Land or Disney. And you can, see, you can see here, they've been recommended in TripAdvisor and they have maids flashing on the screen. So they'll probably get you to come in if you see, see the screen and how fun it is inside. I've been inside. It's pretty fun. Um, I like how they put the price list and everything. It's very clear. College students have a discount. Uh, high schoolers also get more of a discount. So the younger you are, the, the cheaper it becomes. Adults are, are almost double the price as high school kids. That's funny. Preschool and babies are free. What? That's not fair. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that's just for entry, by the way. You don't get anything for entry. Now, the menu is very, very clear. If there's three items, drink, dessert, and food. <laughs> it's, it's that easy. And then they have sets down here. And uh, this is the, the latest prices. The food is super cute. Uh, I haven't seen this one before. This is the, the cutie puppy curry set. Potato salad is included. Hey! The fruit cocktail uh, mini parfait looks pretty good. And I gotta say, the cutie toy poodle looks good too. I don't know. Just like it just it's a couple of pancakes, but it, it's just a, made a little bit better when it's at a maid cafe. And there's an om rice uh, omelet rice. Good. Yeah, so that's maid dreaming. Uh, I'm actually gonna cross the street here. This right in the back. Hey Corey, thank you very much, Corey. I'm gonna cross the street here and uh, take you to a little bit more of the alley before I go towards Chuo Avenue. Behind me is Chuo Avenue, another big intersection, but there's one thing I want to show you and it's right on the corner here. I, I remember this, this intersection and this kind of an Itasha. You see an Itasha is a car that has manga and anime on the side of it. That's kind of an Itasha, it's not a, it's not a very good one. 
if I could see any Tasha, that'll be pretty cool. All right. So this, this shop is where I say goodbye to my friends, what's inside, the first time I met them to do a collaboration to cut open, to cut open a, uh, a gotcha palm machine. So you might want to check that out on the What's Inside channel. We cut open a gotcha palm machine and it was epic. Like I didn't even know that, that uh, uh, how, how these machines work. So it was pretty cool to buy one and then just like, basically just, just like smash it open. Now this vending machine serves Oden. It's a little pricey. I've seen it a lot cheaper, but this is, they also, oh, this is a Tsubasa. They sell like a Tsubasa Oden. This one is warm. Make sure you, when you do buy it, you, you get the warm one because it's just a little bit better when it's heated. This one is the cold one. And uh, it's okay. Inside, I, I believe there's a, uh, a little stick that you can eat it with. They used to have ramen in a can here. It's Oden is, is uh, like uh, vegetables and uh, um, like miniature eggs. And what else is in there? Like fish cake and things like this. And it's all simmered in a dashi sauce, like a, a fish soup stock. This one also has daikon, which is a Japanese radish in there. And it's served in a can. It's a pretty good meal. And the reasoning behind the, the canned food was that, look, otaku don't got a lot of time, okay? They don't have a lot of free time when they come here. They want to just eat, and they don't want to waste their time eating. They want to go to the maid cafe, but they need energy. And the idea was that canned food is a quick, cheap meal, because they don't got a lot of money. They want to spend their money on, on maids and, and, and manga. They don't want to spend their money on, on food. Who'd want to do that? Um, so they, the ramen in a can was popular, but I haven't seen that in a couple of years. Uh, this, th that, that's pretty much all it is. This street is famous for this. This is Abra Soba where uh, Randy Santel, who's a competitive eater, we came here and they made a mistake. We didn't eat at this shop. We went to another one, but this is a very famous uh, ramen shop. It's actually, they say soba, but it's pretty much like ramen and uh, they don't have any soup. This is the weird thing with this ramen. It's just like oily ramen. You see here? Oh, that trash looks so good. Oh man. It's getting close to lunchtime too. Yeah, Abra Soba. It's very famous. This one is always packed. Always packed. All right, that's all I wanted to show you. If you keep walking down here, you're going to discover some history. Basically, old shops that ha are still in business, new shops that are just coming into business. But it's th this street is, is a hub of entrepreneurship where you're going to see a lot of neat stuff popping up. and. It's off of Chuo Avenue, which is right there. So we're gonna go right now back to Chuo Avenue. And then you're gonna see kind of like the, t the circuit that we went on. This is what I call Maid Cafe Alley, which used to be Computer Parts Alley. <laughs> and then <laughs> right down there, it's a pretty colorful. You wanna get off of Chuo Avenue and, and explore the side streets, like going off Broadway. There's the at home that I just showed you. It's a cute little cafe. Holy moly, look at that. I didn't realize that, that this building, the at home is pretty much the entire building. What? Boy, that made cafe is doing really good. So we're walking back to Chuo Avenue. Let's see if we can see an Itasha. Itasha are otaku cars. <laughs> otaku cars. Has anyone ever seen an Itasha? They, they call them Itasha. The word Itai means to hurt, like ouch. And Sha means car, right? It means vehicle. So like an Itasha means like, it's so beautiful to them, it hurts car. Like Itasha. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool. If you can see a good one, the whole car is covered in anim, an, anime or manga. I'm not sure if it comes from an anime or if it comes from manga, I'm not sure. Some of the characters, there's so many manga and anime characters, I, I just can't keep up. But this, looking back from across the street, is pretty, it's pretty epic uh, photo of the city, of this area of the city. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. 
<laughs> Alright, I'm gonna stay on this side of the road. In the center of the screen, as everyone is walking by, you can see that big structure right there. That's Yorobash Camera. That is the world's biggest electronic store. It's huge. It's literally a city within a city. It's lots of cities within a, a huge mega city. Each floor is its own city. And uh, if, if you ever need to get something like brand new or like a new camera, that's the first place that you go because they got everything in there. Yorobash Camera. The Akihabara one is massive, but their first shop was in Shinjuku. And if I buy if I buy um, cameras equipment, I never buy it in Akihabara. I always buy camera equipment in Shinjuku, because Shinjuku's um, that's where the first Yodobash camera is. And Shinjuku has a lot of used camera shops, so it's pretty neat to go around there and compare prices with the used ones, especially for lenses and for camera bodies, just a little bit older. Um, you can find some good stuff. Now we're walking down Chuo Avenue here. Here's some more software companies. Softmap is one of the one of the competitors to uh, Yodobash Camera, and I think they were bought out by Big Camera. Yeah, so Soft Softmap was bought out by Big Camera. So now the two companies are together. Big Camera is Yodobash Camera's biggest competitor. The two of them are pretty big, and Lobby, which is Yamada Denki, is is kind of the third. <laughs> Kay's Denki is out in the countryside and that might be even bigger than all of them. Kay's Denki has a lot of outlets in Japan, just not in Tokyo. If you have seen the video of me going to a particular shrine, one of the hidden shrines of Akihabara, then you know where I'm going right now. Ah! There's some used laptops. That's pretty cool, you can see. Lots of different kinds of laptops that they have on sale here. Lots of different colors, check that out. Hey, Eric Holeron's in the house. Thanks, Eric. Bay 8 Y Loves, thank you as well. So we're getting closer to a shop on the right side. Oh, that looks really good. What? Look at that egg. Just Japanese eggs are, are orange and they're so nutritious. They got so much vitamins in them compared to the ones. I, I always feel like the yellow eggs are not as good as the, as the ones that are bright orange. Now that right there, everybody, is Don Quixote. This has been here for a long time. It's a staple of Akihabara. It's a little bit away from the station, but you can see there's the Don Quixote mascot right there. Don Quixote, or as we just call it, Donkey. Now Don Quixote is where the first Maid Cafe was opened inside of here. Maid Dreamin. Wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I want to get my history right. The first Maid Cafe was not in here, but the first uh, of the at home was inside of here. The first Maid Cafe is no longer here anymore, but that was opened up right over here. So I, I want to get the history right. You have to be careful with the history. But it's pretty cool. Inside of here, you'll still see on the sixth and seventh floor game centers, and there are some retro games in there, up in the up in the top stories. And there's tons of foreign tourists buying um, Japanese snacks in there because this is probably the cheapest place to get Japanese snacks to take home. A lot of them are really light. They they don't take a lot of weight in your suitcase. There's also an AKB48, what? Oh, that's their new signal, uh, single that came out, sorry. The AKB48 Cafe is down this way and we're gonna be going back towards Akihabara Station uh, in about five or 10 minutes, so just stick, stick around. This tour is not even close to finished. Very cool. You can just buy, when you, the, the further you get away from Akihabara Station, the more you start to see the figures start to come out onto the street. They just spill out here. You can buy all sorts of weird stuff, neat stuff, stuff that you've never seen before. UFO catchers on the street. Old iPhones. Let's see how much, how, what, is it, what are the prices on this? Um, oh, so it's not really like, it's not really a big difference. I, you know what, I've always th thought that buying used iPhones was somewhat suspicious. But there's tons of them here. 
There you go, here's another repair shop. So you can get your iPhone repaired. I've never seen that before. Yo, what's up? Yo, I like the I like the gestures. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> Oh, check that out. They have Street Fighter up, up on the screen. That's hardcore. Very cool. I'll oh, check it out. Old game consoles. What? That's an original. I had that when I was a kid. I remember playing on that thing. This one's in color. I never, I couldn't afford the color one. I was, I was old school. <laughs> it was like black and white. All right. So you can, oh, there's a Totoro backpack. So lots of little neat stuff. Novelty stuff. You know, stuff that you could probably buy on Amazon, but it's just a little bit cheaper here because it's probably sitting on, on shelves for, for ages. All right, here's a retro game camp. That's pretty neat. I can hear the Zelda music. There you go. Mario's in there. They got tons of old games. Check that out. What? Oh man, I'm getting flashbacks. I, I know that they're pumping out this music to get you to come into the shop. You can hear the old Legend of Zelda music in there from the Nintendo, the original Nintendo. This is, I think, the original Zelda came in a gold color, I think. It's pretty cool. Super Mario Brothers 3 up there. Some more. So figures seem to be big, and you can get, you don't have to get them at New Year's, but they have the Lucky Bags, the uh, Lucky Fukuro. This one is a One P Fukuro. <laughs> Just everything in here is one piece. So you can get that for 3,000 yen. Lots of different things. Just mystery bags full of stuff. Very cool. Oh, this is around where, I think this is where the first made cafe was. I forget what it was called. Uh, I'm sure Wikipedia has it, but I'm, I think it might have been in that building. Or it was more towards uh, Sue Hirocho. And we're getting closer towards Sue Hirocho Station. Again, here's another, um, here's another electronics uh, computer parts store with the flashing light. And the reason why the lights flash like that, like that here in Tokyo is because is because of the uh, the wavelength. The voltage is 100, and it kind of flashes unless you have a shutter speed of 100, and it's hard to do that on the iPhone. That looks suspicious. Do they eat hedgehogs? I don't know, but we're gonna be walking back on that side of the street. I don't wanna know. <laughs> I don't wanna know. <laughs> So this is on Chuo Avenue walking towards Sue Hirocho Station. And believe it or not, if you're, if you're riding on the um, Hibia line, which is the gray colored line, it might even be better to arrive at um, Sue Hirocho Station and walk back rather than arrive at Akihabara Station and fight the crowds. I prefer, I prefer it that way because it's a smaller station and it's a lot easier to get around. Now you can start to see the gotcha palm baby you can start to see it and these just and these gotcha palm just spill on the street like it's just it's just in the middle of the street there's so many there are lost of price reduction all stock only what <laughs> what does that mean oh okay not lost but lots maybe they just kind of messed it up so we're going to take a quick look into my friend's shop, which is uh, Gachapon Kaikan. Oh, wow. I've never seen this made cafe before. This is weird. Like, they get all of these concepts, and they put it all together. This one is all you can drink for 900 yen. That's like $8 for all the drinks that you can drink. It's in English, too. Ain Sof R. I know, it's a weird name. And this is Saint Universe. Starry Sky Sparkle. These are three words I've never seen put together. And if you need energy, you can just, you know, jump into a ramen place. This one's pretty good. This one's popping because it's lunchtime. You pay at a vending machine, 
get your ticket and then you present it to the staff and they give it to you. There you go. And this one has it in English. So you can see the noodle textures between hard and soft. That's pretty cool. Barikata, kata, futsu, and yawa. Yawa means soft and uh, barikata is, is very hard where they don't really cook the noodles uh, for very long. And I, I kind of like it like kata, katame. There you go. All right, there's more. Now we're gonna go to my friend's shop over here. I've been here many times. And it's because it's just one of those places that I filmed on the main channel. And I got to meet, I called up in advance and I got to meet the owner of the shop and he introduced me uh, to so many unique um, gachapon. You're not allowed to film in the shop, but I might be able to buy one. What do you guys think? Uh, the gachapon go up like four stack high. You can see they go up four stacks high here. And if you want to see the main main channel video on this, you can check out. Uh, I, I went gachapon crazy and we splurged. In fact, in fact, I have a virtual reality 360 video where I filmed in here and you can just spin all around and see all of the gachapon uh, in one video. They do have a lot of weird stuff. And I remember taking my friends from what's inside in here. We found some pretty cool stuff. Gachapon is awesome. Just we take a quick look. Oh, there's some food. It's milk. Some trains old sewing mascots like it, they're just random they don't make any sense at all oh here's some hamster squishies and stamps what It's just like hard-boiled eggs. What? Various eggs. Very different kinds of hard quail eggs, white eggs, brown eggs. There's a onsen, onsen tamago. I don't know why it's it's been in a um, natural hot spring, so it turned black. A red egg. Why? Why would? Why? Why? Why would you buy that? I always see something that just makes me slightly disturbed about the future of the world. <laughs> it's, it's just slightly, like, because it's cool. Yeah, because, you know, hard-boiled eggs are cool. Th this is very famous. This is, a lot of these are very famous in the entrance here. I'm not gonna take you very deep in here, but it's very interesting to see a lot of the different uh, different ones. This one has cats sitting, which is really cool. That's 300 yen. Maybe I'll get one. Okay, hold on a second. Whenever I see cats, I open up my wallet. Let's get one, guys. One, two, three. All right, here we go. So, this is a cat one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just try to get one right here. All right, so 300 yen. Um, I'm gonna give this to Kanai, just because. Here we go. Which which one am I going for? The black cat or the gray cat? I want the I want this one, uh, Dora. It's not taking it. What? Do it. No. Take my take my money. Take my money. Ah, uh, okay, I might have another one. Hold on a second. Oh wait, these puppies in a cup are pretty cute. Hold on, hold, a se hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hey guys, puppies in a cup, what do you guys think? All right, you know what? You know what, you guys, you, you won't take my money, cats? Well, that's just fine. I'm gonna go puppies in a cup, okay? This is 200 yen. All right, here we go. Ready? Gotcha, gotcha, pong.
Oh boy, this is hard. Take my money. It doesn't want to take my money. あ、そう。ええ。ちょっとあの、あ、あ、大丈夫、大丈夫。あ、ゆっくりで。ごめんね。見つけた。ありがとうございます。ゆっくりで。<笑><笑> With love. Ah, 100円も入ったね。久しぶりですね。久しぶり。ああ、入った。入った、入った。あ、大丈夫。ああ、ありがとうございます。Alright. So, I got this one. Let's see what it is. I didn't actually ask him, but he's such a nice guy. That was that was the owner. He said, "I have to do it with love, slowly." <laughs> All right, let's open this up and see what we got here. I'm gonna do it out on the street. Okay. All right, this is a this is a dog and a cup. I've never seen this before. Ah. Uh, Okay, just keep rubbing it. Ah, oh, we got it, okay. You guys ready? Oh, it's, it's mysterious, which one, which one did I want? I was, I really kind of wanted the cats. Okay, hold on a second. Which one, which one is it? Which one is it? Dog in a cup. Dog in a cup. Boom! That's not the one I wanted, but they're all just so cute. Like, why is he in a cup? Why is he in a cup? That's what makes it amazing. Hey guys, welcome to Akihabara. <laughs> all right, that's, that's just part of the fun of being. <clears throat> that's just part of the fun of being here. <clears throat> let, let me just say goodbye to him. He's a nice guy. Ah, uh, arigatou. Mata kuru yo, atou de. Eh, eh. Ah, ah, Wow! Thank, thank you. Guys, come to the shop, definitely. This is the best <laughs> gachapon, uh, ga gachapon shop in Akihabara. So you gotta come here. Come again. Eh. <laughs> I love that guy. Oh, they found a victim. The maid is taking that family to a maid cafe. Do you see how they recruit? You see a, you see a cute maid. You're not from around this part. You just follow them. And she's taking them in. This is maid dreaming, so it's kind of like the McDonald's of the maid cafes. But uh, yeah, they just got they got sucked in to the cute maid cafe culture. <laughs> you can't you cannot deny it. When this girl goes, "Hello," like, what are you gonna do? You become powerless. Doesn't matter if you're male or female. You're just like, whoa. I gotta see what this is all about. All right, I'm gonna cross the street here. We're gonna walk past it and we're gonna go to the secret shrine. Now, I took you guys to the secret shrine a long time ago, last year, it's not that long ago. And it became the first viral video on this channel, believe it or not. We had it, which is kind of strange. Like, we, yeah, we do get videos that go viral on, on a live stream channel, just, which is pretty darn cool. I love these. These are the plastic food models, but can see they make them really really life lifelike but check that out that is calamari like uh, octopus on it very cool I've never eaten there because I'm not gonna eat pasta in Japan 
You got sushi, you got tempura, you got ramen, katsudon, pasta. What's that all about? All right, crossing the street right here. This is Suehirocho. The next stop past on Chuo Avenue would be Ueno. And you can see we're half a kilometer away from Akihabara Station. And now we're going back. Which means it's gonna take a long time to get back there, isn't it? But we're, we'll make it okay. Across the street is um, a really delicious taiyaki shop. Do you guys know what taiyaki is? Taiyaki is these pastries that look like in the shape of fish. And inside of it is, uh... well, you know what? I can cross the street and cross it real back. All right, we're gonna run across the street and just do it. I'm gonna show you what taiyaki is. I'm on a mission. We're on a mission. There you go, that's taiyaki. This shop usually has a line, but there's no line right now. But uh, they're like a, like a dollar. It's, it's, it's one of the original street foods. All right, now we gotta make it back. Okay, we're making it back. Okay, cross the street here. All right. That could be an Itasha, that's a pretty sweet ride. Yeah, rev it, rev it, yeah. There he goes. Yeah, I, I knew he, he wants to rev it. Must be cop around. So we look back, we just walk this whole thing, guys. We walk this whole street. Very cool. Now for the 1,000 people that are watching this. <laughs> this is pretty crazy. We're gonna, we're gonna loop back and go, go back to Akihabara Station via the Secret Shrine. Now. A lot of people have been telling me, oh, John, I can't get to the secret shrine. I can't find the entrance. It's because there is undergoing construction. And there's been a lot of construction off of Chuo Avenue. You can see Chuo Avenue, um, when the lights turn, turn red, there's not a lot of traffic. And you can cross the street all the way down to Akihabara Station. We're going back that direction. Now the, the, the secret shrine, you couldn't find the entrance because they was, it was undergoing construction. And you should have gone in where I went out because the secret shrine of Akihabara is easily accessible from the exit. And that's where we're gonna go first this time. For all the people that came here and were confused or they couldn't make it, now I'm going to help you out with the secret, secret entrance to the secret shrine. All right, here's some more game shops. You're gonna see lots of figures as well. Mario is a citizen of, of Japan, although his, his name is, is Italian. There you go, guys. Loads and loads of figures. You can just buy these. These don't come in boxes, though. But you can buy them here, and they are available. All right. Copyright music, copyright music, copyright fridge man, sorry, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we're in clear. You get demonetized. Another gacha, a lot of the gacha pawn shops have, have sprung up. And um, they are competitors to my friend shop, therefore I support my friends. He's been running that gacha pawn kaikon for like ever. All right. This is why I support gacha pawn kaikon. He has been, he's been running that, he's one of the entrepreneurs of, of this area of the city. He's been running that shop forever, like decades, okay? You see it right there? That's not new. That's why I support his shop, and it's, that's where it is off of the main, main street. And you check in there, he gets all the latest stuff too. This, oh, I gotta stop right here. This building has changed so much over the last five years, 10 years. Now up there is, um, this is a tsundere made cafe. Tsundere meaning like they'll treat you nice and then they just get angry. <laughs> it's like hot and cold made cafe. Uh, this, what? Hold on a second. It's like maid serving curry? That's really weird. What? That's interesting. But up up here, they, they this was famous for having the I think it was called Nagomi or Naomi. I forget the name of the maid cafe. We did this for NHK, but it, the ma I went in there and she she was really sweet. Then she got so angry at me. Like I was like, I didn't do anything. Why are you getting angry at me? It's because it's tsundere. It's a tsundere maid cafe, and tsundere means like hot and cold. 
the woman and, and some dudes like that, I guess. They also had, um, when there was a prime minister of Japan who was famous for reading manga, they had his picture up there as a banner. It's no longer there. He's no longer in power. It's been uh, a Prime Minister Abe for a long time, si over six years now, and this is the second run. Yeah, Tsundere, T-S-U-N-D-E-R-E. -E. Google it. It's lunchtime here in Tokyo, so a lot of people are, are lining up to eat. There's a soba shop, and here's a tempura shop, and you can see everything is just full. That's Tenya. Every seat is full right now because we've run into the lunchtime period. Okay, now we're getting close to, I think this is it, hold on a second. We're getting close to the entrance. All right, here we go. <clears throat> so there's Don Quixote right there. You guys, you guys follow him? You, you pay attention now, <laughs> pay attention. There's Don Quixote right in the center of the screen. I went in through this street and I walked this way. Now we're gonna go towards the end, the exit, which you can tell from this anime Liberty. Do you see that? Now we're going to the secret shrine. Hold on a second. We need we need a wide angle lens. There we go. We are wide. Oh, by the way, there's a very very old Street Fighter II machine. If you feel the urge. Put in a hundred yen and play. You won't be sorry. It's ancient. It's and it's outside, which is so cool. All right. Beyond that pile of garbage <laughs> is one of the one of the most unique shrines in all of the city of Tokyo. Check it out. See, I told you it's open. And there's more trash. All right, this, this alley has been under construction for a long time. We might lose some of the signal, but I do like they put this so you don't bump your head. It's soft. That's, that's only the city of Tokyo thinks of this to protect you from hitting your head. And there it is. It's been completely redone. It's much more accessible than through here. And this entrance was blocked for a long time and it's open again. It's open again because this is an actual street. This is this is considered a street in Tokyo and you cannot block this except for construction or if you have a permit. And there's the secret shrine of Akihabara right there, guys. It's still good. And because the building behind it and the construction is finished, this is a brand new building, because it's all finished, this has all been renewed except for the, the, the grades. So this is all brand new marble. Um, that's not new. These are not new, but everything else is new. And there's, there's, there's a lot of trash around it. I don't like that, but you know, what are you going to do? If you come here, do you got to respect, respect, um, the area and keep it clean. All right. So there you go. Secret shrine. Not that much of a secret, is it? There's the gate right there, and it's literally right off of the alley. Literally. Very cool. All right, let me take you back here, and I'm gonna, this is UDX. For those of you who are following this on Google Maps, I'm now getting nearer the, to the station, and we're going, whoa, we're going towards UDX, which is a brand new expo hall, and you can see it very clearly right there. That's a building right in the center of your screen. And they do have events there. Um, I think there might be a, a Pokemon shop in there. I can't remember. There are some nice restaurants on the uh, behind Chuo Avenue on this side. I can hear the Yamano. Wow, that's not plastic food. They literally just put out the real food. That's pretty cool. That's unique. You don't see that very often in Japan. Oh. Check it out, guys. This is, remember when I was telling you back in the, like, the 1960s and 70s, this place was a little bit smutty? There's a thing now that they have in, in Tokyo, um, and you do see these sometimes. Check it out. They're like, they're like cuddle, cuddle cafes or something. So this is on the ninth floor. Check it out. Look at that dude. He's got a towel on his face and he can't move. 
and the girl in lingerie will cuddle with you, but you can't see her. So how do you know if that's really the same one? You know, you just don't know. But it says here it makes your heart pound while you take a sleep. It makes your heart pound. That's just so, just creepy enough. It's really creepy. But you know, you might want to try it. I don't know. I'm just giving you the option. Don't tell Kunai. I'm not going in there. I don't need to go in there. I got a beautiful wife. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I don't need to go in there. Me going there? I'd never do it. What? Don't even insinuate. I'm just reporting what I see. That's what I do. This is this is well, that's my job. So this is the this is the um, Don Quixote building that we, I showed you like 30 minutes ago. That's Chio Avenue, where people are walking across right there. And then there's the entrance that's no longer blocked. It's right next to this shop here. This one, not that one, but this one. And you can, and you can go in right now. Everything's been, that building is, is finished construction now. So you don't have any problem. I'm not going in that cuddle shop. You guys can, can throw me all the super chats you want. I'm not going in there. <laughs> I, did, I did drink, I did drink the water from a suspicious water fountain two days ago though. You can see that on the, uh, on the channel. <laughs> and they, they, they made me do it with super chats. This is the pachinko place. It does not look like a pachinko place, but it is a pachinko place. Akiba Island. Now Akiba, going back to some of the history, I showed you what Akihabara looked like back in the 1850s. Hey Trekkeris, I will take the bullet for you. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I, I, love re I love these live streams because we got the chat. That's Akihabara in 1888, I believe. It's in the late, late 19th century. And Akihabara means, uh, Aki means autumn, and Ha means leaf, and Bara or Hara means field. So it means autumn leaf field. And you can see it right there. That's a field, and it probably burned down in the fire of 1869. Everything burned down in Akihabara back in 1869, and they rebuilt the city. And Akihabara Station was was built in uh, 18, started building in 1888, completed in 1890, and that really changed the city. In fact, this was not called Akihabara at that time. Um, back then, they called it, I guess, just part of Edo. It didn't really have a name, and it was after the fire that they they called it Akihabara, uh, out of out of respect to the. I'm not sure on this. You might want to Google it. I'm just giving you an advance notice. But to sum it up, um, Akihabara is named after the fire god deity, and they had a Aki Akiba Shrine is the name of the shrine. Akiba Shrine was here, and so that's where you get Akiba. Akihabara Akiba comes from the name of the shrine. But the shrine uh, was moved to Taitoku, which is near Ueno. It's it's kind of on the side of Ueno. So the sh Akiba Shrine, which used to be here, is now. Wait, no, it still exists. I think they just moved the building. You can you can check it out. Akiba Shrine, A K I B A Jinja, Akiba Jinja or Akiba Shrine. Now the UDX building is up here. I've been I've been in here for many expos and events. Um, sometimes as MC of them, which is something that you guys don't need to know. I got other jobs. I make a living. There's a ramen place right there. Again, not all the good stuff is on the main street. The good stuff is off the main street. Never find stuff on the main street. Well, that's not exactly true. Fukushima has a tasting market right there. Fukushima's reputation before everything that happened uh, in 2011 was as, it was like the, the um, vegetable stand of Tokyo. You can get all, all of the vegetables, especially peaches, a lot of vegetables came from there, and they still do because it's it's very separated. Fukushima is the third largest prefecture in Japan, so what you think is happening on the coast is completely different. What's happening on the other side of the prefecture, but it's just really hard to know. I'll just be honest with you; it's really hard to know where in the prefecture it's coming from. Um, it's just a shame that they they when the the reactor melted down, that they called it Fukushima. They should have called it the name of the reactor, the name of the town instead of the name of the entire prefecture because uh, there's other prefectures that are closer <laughs> to that zone. But I don't wanna, I'm not laughing about it. I'm not laughing about it, but it's just ironic that 
they that when, when you hear the name Fukushima, it affects the entire prefecture. But there's mountains, there's valleys, there's lakes, and it's the third biggest. It's pretty big. It's like um, kind of a shame. This is a Fukushima tasting market where they have products from the other side of the prefecture. Just saying. It's called Fukushima Ya Tasting Market. And you can get ice cream and stuff in there. They have a big dairy industry. Yeah, if you do like this, hit the like button. And let me know if you like these walking tours. I've been doing several of them. My favorite walk is from uh, Shinjuku to Shibuya. It takes about 45 minutes and you can walk past Harajuku and Meiji Shrine, which is really cool. Uh, when you walk, that's when you discover a lot more. Now, I have had hundreds of people emailing me over the last several years to go there. And I have never done it. And this is, the, and this is for you several hundred people. I'm going to go up there by, um, by stairs. We're back at Akihabara Station now. And I've been asked to go here way too many times and I'm gonna do it in fact I, you can see it in the center of the screen and if you're following along in Google Maps you know exactly where I am all right follow these guys there you go this is the UDX when they built this everything got really new and, and really beautiful in this area so I'm a big fan of the UDX building it's changed the look of this side of Akihabara. In the distance, right in the center, is the world's biggest electronics store. And you can see the platform of Akihabara Station as people take... Is that the uh, Yamanote line? Yeah, they take the Yamanote line now. Yesterday, I think the Prime Minister, Abe, gave a speech here. When I was scouting this, there, was police, there were police everywhere. There you go, guys. I'm gonna go down the steps now. Just take a closer look. This is for you. An aerial view of the Gundam Cafe. Gundam. And AKB48 Cafe, right in the center of your screens. See that? Nobody's there. It's not a big deal anymore. At least, not to me. Hey, silly nom noms, thank you very much. I will be buying a treat after we finish this walking tour. I could actually hit a vending machine. Uh, as soon as we go around here, I'm gonna get a drink from a vending machine. You guys can help me pick it out. How's that? All right, here comes the Yamanote line into... That's the Keihin Tohoku line, the blue one. And on the other side is the Yamanote line. You can see the green train. That circles the entire city. Akihabara Station was built in 1888. It was completed in 1890. And it completely changed this area because the amount of traffic to this part of Tokyo, which is outside of the Kanda, Kanda River, and the Kanda River circles the Imperial Palace, really increased thanks to public transportation. In the 1920s, I think they opened up the, the uh, uh, other, other forms of transportation, other connections to Akihabara. Yeah, that is a Starbucks up there. <laughs> I'm always like looking at them. I've eaten at this at this uh, bakery uh, many times, Via de France. It's a chain, but it's 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 pretty good. They got some good stuff in there. This whole area is kind of still new, and I think it was about six or seven years ago. It was under construction for the longest time, and when it opened up, after all that construction, we got this, which is the AKB48 cafe and shop and if you're into AKB48 you are in luck because you can kind of uh, go in here and feel that that closeness to them now they can't actually play the music outside because it's all copyrighted so they know that you can't actually even see it but you can see some of the pictures out here and Tsuwata got the shop so they're, they're selling these cards that you can see so yeah if you're into it this is going to be your new favorite place. It's your new favorite place. And you got some of the idols right there from AKB48. I, I don't really, oh, I'm putting the uh, wide angle lens the other way. I don't really know much about AKB48 other than 
one of the talents, I think, ran over a, a bicyclist the other day after drinking and it caused a big scandal here. But here's some AKB48 food. Let's take a quick look. All right, there you go. Doesn't say the prices on here. That's kind of cute. I like how they've, on the seaweed, they've made a symbol on there, kind of a character. I don't know much about this, but there you go. For those who like Gundam, I say it like that because I've, I've been corrected and, and corrected again <laughs> many times on how to pronounce it. I really don't know. Gundam. This is the Gundam Cafe. And yes, they have one in Akihabara and they have one in, in uh, Odaiba as well. Mobile Suit Gundam. It's very, that's, that's, it's, it is an actually really cool anime. Like they put a lot of work into uh, the effects. And you can see when they made, you can, there's a good shop, so if you want to buy merchandise from here, you can. But they also have some gachapon outside. So you can get some Gundam stuff. And there you go, there's the logo for the Akihabara Gundam Cafe and Bar. And I guess this one has a little bit more, I don't know, the one in Odaiba I think is a little bit better. I don't know. Whoa! The Gundam food is pretty hardcore. Check that out. What? No. Is that here? Boy, Gundam Cafe was pretty stylish. I had no idea. This is almost worthy of a date. I could bring a date here. Kanai might, doesn't really into the Gundam stuff, but she could be. The food's good. So there you go. It's a Gundam Cafe. This, this came about, I guess, about six, seven years ago when this whole area was renewed and there's the UDX building right there. Now, oh, hey, thank you. That was pretty cool. She, she's like, look at this. And he's like, oh, we watch your videos. Like, ah, oh. that was pretty cool. All right, we're going down underneath here. Check it out, there goes. Is that the Shin, that's not the Shinkansen. That is the Shinkansen. The Shinkansen goes underneath here. We might lose some of the some of the traffic, but you can go underneath the Yamanote line and Akihabara station here. It's pretty cool. This one is for the um, Shinkansen, and that Shinkansen is connected uh, to Ueno station. So it doesn't actually it doesn't stop in Akihabara, but it connects to Ueno. Ueno is the uh, gate. So one of the reasons why Akihabara is significant, it was very close to the gate of Edo back in the Edo period. It's like we're talking over a century ago before the Meiji Restoration. The Meiji Restoration took place in 1868, I believe. Yeah, 1868. And before then, there was a gate to the city of Edo. And Akihabara was right next to that gate. But it was on the other side of the Kanda River. I'm, I'm, I keep going back to the Kanda River. The importance to the history of the city of Tokyo of the Kanda River is pretty significant. Outside of the Kanda River, you're kind of lower. If you're inside of the Kanda River, you're pretty. You're an aristocrat. You're pretty. You're big. You're a big deal. Nowadays, though, you know Akihabara. If you live around here, it's a nice location. Anything on the Yamanote line is super convenient. Now we are at the footsteps of the world's biggest electronic store, Yodabash Camera. It is absolutely massive, and I don't know if I can take you inside. Do I dare? Do I dare do that? I dare not, but I might. And I'm gonna take you through that alley right there. This is a street food paradise. I might actually even get something. Because as I said, like I'm getting thirsty and this live stream has been going on for almost an hour and a half. This is pretty much the limit of Akihabara. Akihabara will go, go back deeper this way, but uh, you start to get to Okachimachi and Ueno this direction. And if you go this way, I'm going to take you and show you a couple more things before we end this live stream. This is a pretty good circuit. Uh, I'm going to show you a bridge and where we can do another walk in the future. This is the starting point of another walk. <coughs> Excuse me. Now these bicycles, there's, there's only one here right now, but these are the Tokyo share bicycles. This is the ride sharing, I guess, bicycle sharing uh, bikes. 
and you can register these online. They're they're sponsored by Docomo. They're Panasonic electric bikes. There's a battery right there. The batteries are usually charged. It'll tell you how charged it is by pushing this button. Well, there's not a lot of battery power left on that, but these are battery boosted bikes. You can rent these for the day. The price is a little bit expensive, but it's kind of fun to go around by bicycle. There's information packs if you want, but if you just go Tokyo bike sharing or community cycle, community cycling, you'll be able to find it. These came out like earlier this year, I believe. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna take you s slightly inside, just to this entrance, okay? It was raining this morning. I'm really glad that the rain is. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm really glad that the rain has stopped. Oh. Parking garage. All right, everybody. We got a vending machine, and you guys can tell me what to get. There's one over here. Oh. These are one of the brand new taxi cabs. They look like English cabs. Check it out. You see that? They're for the 2020 Olympics. And because the, the luggage that people carry was so big, they had to increase the size of the taxi cabs. And these are actually much better. There's more space in the back. There's more space for taller people. It's easier to get in and out. And they can. And as a result, over the course of a day, they could probably take an extra ride or two because people get in and out faster. Very cool. They take credit cards. Um, I it, Uber is not big in in Japan, but Uber is ultra 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 convenient. But they only have Uber Black here, so if you're asking about Uber, um, it's it's about 35% more expensive, I think, than to take the regular taxi cabs. Taxi cabs are really expensive um, in Japan, but the the starting price of taxis were lowered from about 700 yen to 480 yen, so it's cheaper to the initial ride, but the price is going to be about the same because in the end, you know, unless you're going just two blocks, the meter starts to go up pretty fast. I see that they brought back the uh, Coca-Cola coffee is back in the vending machines. I'm not gonna be going for that because I tried that before and it's really not good. Jennifer and I did a live stream on eating that. Uh, I love this street because there's tons of street food here. And if you take a look right here at this place called Sweets Paradise, you can see here um, what Jennifer and I did was this ramen cake and it's 1,000 yen or about $9. And they also have apple pie gyoza, which is pretty cool looking. They also have soba udon, which is, looks like the instant noodle stuff. But this is all cake, believe it or not. They have a mini ramen there. Uh, mini ramen for 600 yen or about five five and a half dollars It's pretty cool. You can have your baby printed on a cake. There you go. There's a, um, a miso, miso udon. Check that out. That looks not like cake, but it's like an applesauce topping on top of it. Highly recommend stopping by here and checking out. This one's a crab egg cake, <laughs> but it doesn't taste like that. It tastes sweet. I, I mean, Jennifer and I did an unboxing of one of those and ate it. It was really good. This is one of my favorite donut shops because they have something here. I'm just going to go between these people here. That's a cream brulee donut. It's a, it's a cream brulee donut. All right, there's a line here. I'm gonna see if I can get one. They're so darn good. I don't know why Tokyo has cream brulee donuts, but I'm really, really glad that they do. Yeah, yum is the word. That's the right way to put it, yum. And this alleyway kind of goes, goes between the station. You can see inside of Yorobashi Camera, the biggest electronic store in the world. You can also get takoyaki here. They're always making it, which is very, very cool. Check it out. This dude's going to town. He loves to play with those balls. Look at that. Boom. Look how fast he is turning them. Just sizzling in the gas-powered stove underneath it. It looks very good. And there's the final product. They cost about, um, they're a little bit expensive at this. This is a chain. They're about $7. Six dollars for one. What? A croissant taiyaki. Okay. So taiyaki is what I showed you before, but this is a croissant version of it. it has custard inside. Custard is very good. 
Oh, you can see, and they're making the croissant taiyaki right there. You see right there? They're putting together. Hey, we got a donut. Thank you. Thank you for the super chat. I'm gonna I'm gonna go around and get get a donut right really quickly. Hope you guys don't mind. I have one more thing that I want to show you. All right, all right. All right. <laughs> this is like this is going crazy. Right there in front of us is the entrance to the subway. That there's the Hibiya line to Akihabara. Just so you know and get a viewpoint, it's connected with the JR from this entrance. You can literally come out of there. You make a right, and JR is right there. But we're going back for the donut and a drink, and then I'm gonna take you to the final place that I'm gonna show you to end this live stream. And this has been a lot of fun. Hey Gavin, thank you. I will take some questions after my donut, okay? Donut first. Donut, then questions. <laughs> and in that order, <laughs> I'm serious. No, 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 dude, don't get in line, don't get in line, don't get in line. All right. Here we go. Oh wow, these look really good too. That's a matcha donut. Oh, that's a, hey, New York donut. This is a croissant donut glazed from New York. What? It's, this one's very popular in New York, but I'm not in New York, I'm in Tokyo. And in Tokyo you eat the cream brulee donut for 250. So, that's what I'm going for. Just give me a minute. I need to recharge. The other donuts are pretty cheap. These are only 77 yen each, which is like, uh, I don't know, like 70 cents. That's pretty cheap for a donut. So this 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 uh, premier, premier matcha donut is 77 yen. That's pretty, that's pretty cheap for a matcha donut. Hey, Tofuti, thank you very much. Mm. Alcohol sanitizer. Keep it clean, guys. We're not taking a pit stop. After this, I'm gonna go to the vending machine. We're gonna get a drink, okay? One more thing to show you. If you do like this Akihabara tour, give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you like this, and I'll take you on other tours. And I might be back here in Akihabara because every season this place seems to change. Every year, something new comes out. Pretty cool. All right. Ah, cream brulee donut. One. Hi. 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 はい、ございます。食べてください。あ、はい、すぐに食べます。今食べます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。わあ。ダンダンダンダンダンダンダン。All So, this ladies and gentlemen is a cream brulee donut brought to you into the light. Do you see the light? That looks so good. Oh man. Cost me about two dollars and thirty cents. And right, let's put this thing down. <laughs> we we got a lot to see. Okay, let me put this thing down. Cream brulee donut. I like how they they blow torched it. I think. <laughs> I approve. It's crunchy on the top of it. Oh, it's got that burnt sugar crunchiness on the top of it. Oh, man. Uh, Gavin writes in his first super chat. Hey, Gavin, thanks. Much appreciated. Brandon, all right. Thanks, guys. Oh, man. No, this shouldn't be so good. Why do you do this to me? I gotta eat another one. <laughs> I gotta go back and get another one. Oh man, look at the cream oozing out of it. The street food in Akihabara is not healthy. Do not look for a salad here. 
you come to Akihabara, you're going to be eating deep fried meat, pasta, ramen, nothing that's going to... Basically, coming to Akihabara, it shortens your life by like a month. Every meal here shortens your life by like a month. Oh, man. I'm taking bigger bites. While I'm doing that, you guys can pick out a drink for me, okay? This is a Coca-Cola vending machine. We have some green tea, bottled water. Real gold. These are all made by Coca-Cola Japan. And over here on this side, kind of the same stuff. Iced coffee sounds good, Budica. <clears throat> oh man. I don't know if I want to go for Dr. Pepper. This is a, a Coca-Cola coffee. This is an adult flavored grape juice, meaning it's not sweet. I like that. I like that. Hey there, buddy. Are you just here on a coincidence or what? Well, I gotta get you back because you showed up in my town stuck out in Ababa one day like, where is I? Like, How long did it take you to get here? 20 minutes. <laughs> I've been doing this for almost two hours, so you should have gotten here a lot earlier. Well, I have to do, so. Ladies and gentlemen, to the 1,100 people watching, I present to you My Life Japan, Alan Welsh. Hey, everybody. How's right. it going? Everybody says hello. Well, most people. Some people are, are saying 1111. What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Now, if you read the live stream, it, it gets you really confusing. Is that a dog sound? 1111? One, 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 one. Maybe it could be. I think I'm gonna go for the Max Coffee, and you know why? Because that has the most sugar of all of these drinks. You might think that the Coca-Cola is, is the most sugary drink. No. If you've ever had a Max Coffee, you will know. Instantly, the moment you put your lips onto the can, that this thing is just pure sugar. Okay. Here we go. And don't tell my wife that I'm drinking all this and eating all this crap. She's trying to get me to, to eat good food. Kamenaki Habara is, is not going to do that. Here we go, Max Coffee. These coffees used to... Oh, you're going to get your change. These coffees used to not be in Tokyo. These coffees used to be only in the north of Tokyo. You couldn't get them in the city itself. Now Max Coffee, which... You, you, there's also a Max Shinkansen that goes up towards um, uh, Tohoku, I believe. Well, there you go. It was This Max Coffee was along the Max Shinkansen line. And it is super sweet. And right now, I'm going to put the... What did you get? Old school black coffee. No sugar. Got to watch my weight. You watch your weight. You're not Akihabara! You want to split a ramen cake? <laughs> nah. Nah. Ramen cake? You, didn't, you don't know about that? No, what is that? Oh, yeah. See, he was on the train and commuting. Oh, hold on a second. Here we go. All right, cheers, buddy. Cheers. Hey. Long time no see. Yeah. I thought the cream brulee was sweet. Max. Wow. Do you normally have that? What? Do you normally have that? Uh, I did when I first came to Japan because I used to live in Fukushima, mm -hmm. in uh, Iwaki, Fukushima, mm -hmm. and they had these in the vending machine. And I just like the yellow color. It's it. It gives you a little bit extra uh, boost. For 20 minutes, but the letdown is real hard. <laughs> 20 minutes later, you're like, the crash. Yeah, you need another one. If you take a look here, Alan, they got the katsudon cake, ramen cake, soba cake. You don't know uh, dream, sweet dreams? Uh, sorry, sweets paradise. Sorry. Yeah, okay, so you, you have plain coffee and you can stuff. Balance it out. There you go, ramen cake. I like the mini katsudon. Looks so. It actually looks realistic. I know it's it's creepy. I trick I I kind of tried to trick Jennifer into eating it. There's a live stream that I did with that uh, last year. All right, there's one thing I got to show the people. Okay. Yeah, what, what do you have? To, what do you have to say? No, did she almost go for it? You said you tried to get her to eat it. Did she almost eat it, or how did it go? You put food in front of Jennifer, she'll eat it. Ninety-nine percent of the time, she might not like it, but she'll eat it. All right. I'm going to the bridge over there. <clears throat> 
So, yeah, a little bit. In Japan, you should not walk and drink. What, Al, what, why is that? Why shouldn't we walk and drink? No mi aruki? Well, yeah. There's, there's no mi aruki, which means like, like drink and walk. Or more commonly, tabe aruki, which means uh, walk and eat, which is kind of uh, bad manners. Uh, bad manners. Yeah. So you shouldn't do it because it's bad manners. Oh. This is Akihabara. There's a lot of these guys don't take showers. I think that's bad manners to stink, right? I don't know. Like, I, don't, I don't know why people, some people just, they, they're so into manga and anime, they forget to take a shower. And sometimes you walk behind them here, and it's not the best walk. So you walk either faster to get in front of them, or you walk real slow to let them pass. <laughs> I'm just saying, Akihabara is kind of, I see yuck here. I'm just saying, it's my experience. Now this is the other side of, of the um, Yodabashi camera. Do you know who that is? I don't know. And everyone else knows. Thinking about, you know oh, that's, that that's Goku, right? From Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. Oh, or do you mean the dude in the shop? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. What do you mean? <laughs> oh, hey. So, if you want to get lunch sets and things like this and you don't want to eat uh, where all the otaku are, I recommend this area. They have a lot, in this brand new building, there are tons of uh, lunch sets. You can see these posters out here. Some of them are yakiniku, some of them are, are teishoku, some of them are uh, right here. This one looks really good. Alan introduced me to um, Otoya a long time ago. Yes. This set will, will set you back uh, 1,000 yen or like $9. That's actually a steal. Oh, karage, I love karage. Set you back. Set you back. So how would you compare it to Otoya versus this one? Uh, this, that looks better. That looks better on paper, but Otoya is oh yeah. so good. It's hard to beat them. The last place I'm taking you is right there. And that's where we're gonna end it. We've basically done a massive circle all the way to uh, Siro, uh, Sue Hirocho. If, you, if you're watching this, you might wanna loop back and, and uh, watch the replay just to check out the beginning of this. It's pretty cool to bring a thousand people along for this amazing ride. And if you haven't seen Alan's channel, My Life Japan, uh, it's one of the most under, not, pe more people should just see it. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> Can't say it any better than that. But I've been yelling at him for years. I think, didn't you try to imitate me in the last one? Oh, your impersonation? Oh yeah, the John impersonation. Didn't you try to imitate me in the last one? <clears throat> Awful job. That was pretty good. Do, do not watch his channel, never go there. Stay away from it like the plague. Do not that, watch his channel, No, you, go there. because you always like say the, the opposite. <laughs> if you say that, then people will do it. He's still doing it. Now this Washington hotel here across the street, I, I know a lot of really useless information, but this might be useful to somebody since we got people watching here. Washington hotel has one room. It's so special. Inside of that room is a train set and it's called the train room, I believe. I don't, I, that's I'm just calling it, I believe. And the train room's on the other side of the hotel and you can play with the train all day long. And it's one of the most popular rooms and most requested rooms in the Washington Hotel. So if you come to the Washington Hotel in Akihabara, ask for the train room. It's probably going to be booked, but you never know. All right, here we go. This is a shortcut that pretty much only locals know about. Do you know, do you know where we're going? To the bridge? I have no idea. Seriously? Worst sense of direction ever. I'm whole cold. This is in your neighborhood. You're not used to this uh, side. This is my, my hood. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stop right here, Alan. Do you guys see it? On the left side, there is a place where everyone's walking in and out. It follows the tracks of the Shinkansen and the Yamanote line. And Kanda Station is 600 meters, so you can walk to the next train station. You don't have to ride the Shinkansen, or ride the Yamanote line. Now this bridge has been here for as long as I can remember. And it's kind of a secret bridge that a lot of people will walk by and miss. So I'm gonna take you onto the top of the bridge and show you the Kanda River, and then I'm gonna end this live stream. Really? Yeah, I've never been back here. Well, you, you, you've been in Japan longer than me, no? <laughs> but I haven't. <laughs> no. when, when did you come to Japan? Oh, man. 2000? 2000. Oh, yeah. I, I got you beat by two years. <laughs> All right. Right there is... There goes the Shinkansen, the Toki Max, making its way to Tokyo Station. This bridge is one of the most unknown bridges. Can put my drink right there. 
as I show you this amazing place. I'm gonna put the wide angle lens on the other side. Um, so that's gonna be it from me and Alan here. <laughs> we had a pretty good trip. That Denny's right there is pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people might not know, but the Denny's right there, you can sit outside and overlook the river here. It's not the cleanest river in the world. It's not the best river in the world. But it's a river. It's kind of neat to, to hang out here. It's a historical river. Um, this is circles the entire city. And although Tokyo is a train city, right? We have a lot of train lines and subways. This is also a canal city, very much like, not quite like Amsterdam, but they do a lot of, historically, a lot of the commerce was on the river, on, on the canals that went um, all through the city. And this one goes around the entire city, which is pretty cool. It's very cool. Uh, over there is two, two things I want to point out. One of them is, is this really old shrine. Um, and, and across this bridge is where the, the vending machine House of Horror is, <laughs> where my friend Peter... You don't know this stuff? No. What? The vending machine House of Horror, what is that? The vending machine House of Horror, what is that? If you want to know, click this link here that I'll put in at some time in the future. It was, it was a, an episode I did a year ago, almost a year ago to this day, where Peter and I were horrified at what we found in those... You don't know, seriously? You were genuinely horrified? Yeah. No, not really. No, 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 no. Because on the second floor of the House of Horror, mm -hmm. there's a homeless dude living up there. And the only way that you can get up to the second floor is to climb to the top of the vending machine and go up there. And it smelled like human, human. It smelled like old human. But the guy wasn't a prop. He was actually... No, I, we don't know. We didn't go up there. I wanted to go up there and, and check it out. But, you know, I was prevented um, to do so by the law. <laughs> the law will do make you do strange things. That was for authenticity. If you smell urine, it must be real. That was part of the. You know, uh, if you smell it, it must be real. That's um, that's your that's the quote of of this. If you smell it, it must be real. <laughs> if you mean, smell it, you're in Akihabara. Akihabara does not smell. This is not have the this is not the best smelling neighbor, neighborhood. It's not not the best, not the worst. It's not the best, it's not the worst. If you do have some questions, you can write them for the next 30 seconds. I will answer them in one word or less because I seriously have to go. We're at 107 minutes into this live stream and the battery. Um, sing Kanda River, Kandagawa. <laughs> I'm not gonna sing that. Basically because I don't know the words. Do you know the words to Kandagawa? No. No. Kandagawa. Kandagawa. You know how to write along it? I don't know the words. Yeah, GCKE is going Vending Machine House of Horrors. Oh man, you gotta follow this channel. Click the subscribe button. If you go over to, the, go over to a year ago, you'll find it. Um, that's one of the most fun live streams that we did. It was a spooky. Uh, actually, some other YouTubers after we did it went over there to, to do it. And, uh, you well, know, it's, it's, it's case, You're a trendsetter. Yeah, set trends. I'm sure that somebody did it before me. I just didn't research it. I knew it from a friend of mine. How do you put user's name in orange highlight? It's called a super chat. Super chat is where people um, help me financially buy cups of coffee, a <laughs> hundred of them. Uh, let's see here, any questions? What is that lovely vending, vending machine with the weird stuff in it? Um, oh, that's the mystery vending machine, the 1,000 yen vending machine. That, that's an episode on the main channel, you can see that. Why don't you get another donut? Uh, yeah. I will, maybe. I, it's not an attractive thing to have cream all around your face. I usually go to town and two bites, I take them down. Alan's challenge channel is My Life Japan. The foreign experience. My Life Japan, M-I-L-I-F-E-J-A-P-A-N. Uh, he puts a lot of work and effort into it, maybe too much, because the frequency of it is like once every... How, how often is a blue moon? It has not true this month, actually. I started uploading weekly. Okay. So He's new episodes every week, and I'm going back to my narrative and short skit format, actually starting in two weeks. Okay, cool. So tune in. Yeah, he's got some videos about living in Japan and skits that are based on real life. But his background is like, like real productions and, you know, like action, rolling, cut. That's right. I tend to Steven Spielberg it a little too much, but I kind of scaled it back. Make it nice and packageable for, you know, yeah. consumption, so. We both wear hats. There's another reason to All like right. Alan. Should I John Dobbit? Yes, you should. Backwards <laughs> is backwards is the way to go. I can totally pull it off. Uh, you got some subs here. Thank you very much. Uh, they said that Alan went to Japan in 2000. That's right. 
Yeah. Any questions about Akihabara? Or did are you growing a mustache? No, I just didn't shave this morning <laughs> or yesterday morning. Mustache? This takes a lot of work, people. All right. Does it grow uneven or is it patchy? It grows completely patchy and, and peach fuzzy. <laughs> it's just my curse. That's why Kanai married me. You're so soft. Uh, join the Crystal Pepsi or Coke Clear. Coke Clear wins. It's better taste. All right, guys. That's about it. I don't see any more. Uh, uh, Tsundere. It's called. Uh, will you go to the Yandere? I don't know if it's called Yandere, but there's one. There's a Tsundere. It's called Nagomi. I believe is the name of it. It's it's one of the weird ones and original made cafes. It's been around for ages. It's still here, I believe. I remember walking in there for NHK doing a report. Do you, remember, do you know Kevin Cooney? I the name sounds familiar. He was one of the original J vloggers. Um, I don't know if he's in Japan. I'd love to hear from him again. He's he's somebody who inspired me to do more YouTube, but. Uh, Kevin Cooney and I, back on NHK World Tokyo I, we went and did Maid Cafe Tour. I wish that was on, this was before YouTube was big, I wish that episode was on YouTube 2008 because it, it was, we did like eight or ten Maid Cafes in one episode, it was insane. One of them was a Tsundere Cafe where the woman, she's your best friend and then she goes evil on you. Like she, I'll buy potato chips and then she, she won't give it to me and then when she does she slams it down and breaks all the chips. It's like, what just happened? And then, and then the next moment, she, I, I'd, pret I'd pretend like I'm leaving the maid cafe, and then she'd get real nice and start crying. Like, people like to be messed up with the head. I, I don't know. But maid cafes, they all have some unique, like, personality or char characteristic to it that is what attracts people to it. And Sundere is a thing. My friend Patrick, uh, who wrote the Otaku Encyclopedia, Patrick Galbraith, He's the one who got me in on the Maid Cafe thing. And he has like $10,000 worth of point cards because the guy goes all the time. Gotta respect the man who likes his Maid Cafes so much that he has $10,000 worth of point cards. Just saying. All right. And uh, Lalu, thank you very much. Get some karage, ah, karage lunch. Yes. Okay, that's where I'm going for lunch. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Tokyo Game Show is going on. You remember, that's where... Oh, wow. That's going way back. Way, way back. We have a Tokyo Game Show main channel episode from 2013. Was it 2013, right? Yeah, something Cameraman. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, he was a cameraman for that. That's 2013, the golden age. I did that one and the one where you did the, uh, the makeover. Yeah, the makeover, the, uh, the Harajuku fashion episode. Alan's uh, camera work saved the day. Would have been really boring. And the UFO catcher. And the UFO catcher. You're more the star of that one. How am I the star of that one? Soft spoken. <laughs> <laughs> you have to see the UFO catcher. Alan was in the UFO catcher, uh, Secrets of the UFO catcher episode of the main channel. Very cool. Yeah, bipolar maid cafe. That's what Sundere is. It's like bipolar. It's weird. Check it out. Google it. Sundere. T S U N D E R E. I gotta go, guys. This is uh, where we're ending it. If you want to walk from Akihabara to Tokyo Station, you walk using this bridge. And if you keep on going straight this way, you'll get to Tokyo Station. It's a pretty cool walk. After you've walked Akihabara, this is your next challenge. And maybe the next episode of Only in Japan Go. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good day, good night, wherever you are in the world. Take care. Thanks for the support, the super chats, guys. And uh, I'm about to get lunch, so have a good one.